MIT's Integration B is one of, if not the most challenging undergraduate math competition in the world. This is question two from the first semi-final this year. Students had only four minutes to complete this, which is absolutely mind-blowing. Let's have a look at how they do it. So the first step in solving this problem is going to be a u substitution. We'll let u equal to e to the minus x. So differentiate them, we'll get that du dx is equal to minus e to the minus x, i.e. minus u. So we can rearrange for dx and see that that's going to be minus du over u. Beautiful. If we rearrange the first bit as well, we can also see that minus x is going to equal to log u. So i.e. x is equal to minus log u. If we look at the limits as well, when x is equal to 0, well, log of 0 is going to be just 1. So u will be 1. And when x is infinity, let's think what happens to e to the minus x as x tends to infinity. That tends to 0. So u in this case will be 0. So now we can rewrite the entire integral in terms of u instead of x. So of the integral, instead of from 0 to infinity, it will be 1 to 0. x is now minus log u. e to the minus 2x, well that's the same, if we think about that part by itself, is e to the minus x all squared. So in this case, that's going to be u squared. The bottom then is going to be u plus 1. And our dx is going to be replaced by a minus du over u. Beautiful. So we can cancel some things off here. Our minus here and our minus here can go. We've got a u squared and a 1 over u. So those can cancel out a little bit. The square will go and the 1 over u will go. So rewriting that, it's 1 to 0. Well, integral of 1 to 0 of u log u over u plus 1. All with respect to u. So the next thing we're going to do is start to think about by parts with this. We've got one section which is log u. So if we think about differentiating log u, we end up with 1 over u. And now if we go to integrate u over u plus 1, we can think of the numerator and just slightly rewrite it and make it u plus 1 minus 1 over u plus 1. This then we can separate out. You can see we have this u plus 1 and this u plus 1. So we can rewrite that as 1 minus 1 over u plus 1 with respect to u still. And these we can integrate separately. So we end up with u minus the log of u plus 1. We're not worried too much about the modulus here because our entire thing is going to be positive. And in case of u as well, we're still positive. So this section, always positive as well. So now then, we can rewrite our original integral. We're going to have the log of u coming from over here. And then multiplied by this section over here. So that is u minus the natural log of u plus 1. This entire section will be evaluated at 1 and 0. And we're going to take away the integral of 1 over u times this section. So that's why by parts done. So 1 over u, that u there will cancel to make just a 1. And we'll have take away the natural log of u plus 1 all over u with respect to u. Again, still evaluated, still evaluated at 1 and 0. Let's just have a look at this part for a second. When u is 0, here we're going to have 0 take away log 1. So that's just 0. And when u is 1, log 1 is 0. So this entire section, we can just cancel off. It's all equal to 0. Makes our job a little bit easier going forward. So now all we need to consider is this integral at the end. And we'll actually at the same time, this negative, we can flip our limits over. So we'll rewrite that on the next page. So here we are. We'll start off and just mess with this. This one here is nice and simple. That will give us x when we integrate it. When we evaluate that at 1 and 0, we're going to get 1 minus 0. So i.e. just 1. So this one we can just pop out the front effectively. So we've now got 1, take away the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of u plus 1 over u. All with respect to u. How we're going to attack this is by using the expansion of log of u plus 1. So what we're going to have then is an infinite series, or an infinite sum, going from 1 up to infinity of minus 1 to the power of n minus 1. So wait, this gives us the alternating sum. We're going to start off when n is 1, this is 0. So we start positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. We divide this by n itself, and we multiply this by 
u to the power of n. So this ends up giving us, in this case, we have u minus u squared on 2 plus u cubed on 3 uh, minus u to the 4 on 4, etc, etc. When we divide this, though, by u, all that happens is our power drops by 1. Nice and simple. So we want to integrate this thing. We can think about doing that. So if we integrate this, we notice we've got an integral and a sum. We can swap those around. And as well, this whole section has nothing to do with the integral, which is with respect to u. So we, our integral is effectively just of this part over here. So now, what we started with, the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of u plus 1 over u, we're able to rewrite it as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n, multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of u n minus 1 du. So this integral is nice and easy to compute. We can do that here straight away. And what we see, we raise the power, we'll get u to the n. We'll divide by that new power, which is n. But we want to evaluate this at 1 and 0. So when we plug in 1, we'll get 1 over n. When we plug in 0, we get 0. So this entire integral is just 1 over n. So now we can rewrite our original integral. We have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1, n minus 1 over n multiplied by that 1 over n that we just found. So this n on the bottom will become an n squared. So this then is the alternating series of like the reciprocal of squares. So writing them out term by term, it's like 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over 4 squared, etc, etc, repeating off to infinity. So we'll consider that on the next page and see what we can, if we can evaluate that basically. It was actually helpful to have it written out like that. So we've got 1 over 1 squared, minus 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3 squared, minus 1 over 4 squared, etc, etc. We have a known value for the positive case here. So if we could rewrite this in terms of the positive case, that would be very useful. So let's think about doing that. Here we have like minus 1 lots of this one and minus 1 lots of this one. Whenever we have an even number on the bottom... But if we think about that instead, we could write this as like 1 over 1 squared plus 1 minus 2 lots of 1 over 2 squared. Again, plus 1 over 3 squared. And then in a similar manner again, plus 1 minus 2 lots of 1 over 4 squared. Expanding these brackets and collecting them then, what we've got is 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared from here. We'll get all the positive ones first. So we've got the 1 over 3 squared... And in a similar manner, we'll have the 1 over 4 squared as well. This still going off to infinity, as should be the, the line above. And now that we've got negative 2 lots of the sum of the even squares, so 2 squared, 1 over 4 squared, 1 over 6 squared, etc. Now if we go and rewrite this in terms of like sigma notation again, this is just the sum of the squares, nice and simple. And this thing is going to be take away 2 lots, of the sum of the even squares, so 2n squared on the bottom. Again, both of these are going from um, n equals 1 even, not 0, up to infinity, and this one, n equals 1, up to infinity. This 1 over 2n squared, if we expand the brackets, we get 1 over 4n squared, and that 1 over 4 we can take out. So when we combine that 1 over 4 with this 2, we get a half. So what we have is the sum of 1 over n squared minus a half of that sum, 1 over n squared. Again, going from 1 to infinity, 1 to infinity in both cases. So we can factorise that out, and this ends up being entirely just a half of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. So if we think about our original integral now, whatever that was, long, long ago, we've got 1 minus a half of this sum. Remember, that 1 minus, if we look back a page, is up here. So that sum was the same as this integral, because that's all we were considering. Was that integral, not the 1 minus as well? So we need to make sure we've still got that 1 minus in there as well. This is actually a known result. So the sum of the reciprocal of squares is known to be 
in this case we've still got the half, but it's going to be pi squared on 6. So half of that is going to be pi squared on 12. So our final answer is 1 minus pi squared on 12. I will go and write that just on the page we started on as well. So our final answer, 1 minus pi squared on 12. We'll show you where that pi squared on 12 comes from, or the pi squared on 6, if you want to think about it that way instead, in another video. So if you want to see that, please let me know. But if not, thank you very much for watching. Um, beautiful question, I think. But yeah, very nice answer in the end.